Hello, I'm Sandra Dodd. I'd like to give you some tips on doing unschooling right. This video has been created for the Doing Life Right teleconference in 2012. There's no one single right way to unschool, but there are many paths that ultimately lead away from success. So I would like to outline a map to becoming a successful unschooling parent. Unschooling is based on the school reform movement and the research of the late 1960s and early 70s. John Holt wrote in those days about school reform, but by the end of the 1970s, he was recommending that parents keep their children home. In the United States, school at home came along in the 1980s with fundamentalist Christians who thought schools didn't control children well enough and gave them too much information. But unschooling was already being done by families who felt that schools were too controlling and gave too little information. So there is quite a dichotomy. John Holt wrote, to parents, I say above all else, don't let your home become some terrible miniature copy of the school. No lesson plans, no quizzes, no tests. My definition for unschooling is creating and maintaining an environment in which natural learning can thrive. The environment I'm talking about, what we sometimes call an unschooling nest, is not just the physical home though, it's the relationships within the family and the exploration of the world outside the home by parents and children both. The emotional environment is crucial, the relationships. Here's another good piece of advice in general, not just about unschooling, about anything you want to learn. Read a little, try a little, wait a while, watch. Read a little more, try a little more, and gradually you will notice more and more learning happening, and soon it'll be happening all the time. Parents need to become unschoolers, need to become unschooling parents, and that process doesn't happen all at once. First, learn about learning. Not about school and that kind of learning, but learn about how real-world natural learning happens. Think back to the way babies and toddlers learn. Think of how you've learned games, songs, how to cook or to repair or to build things outside of school. While you're finding new ways to see the world, your child will be learning by playing and by asking questions. Be his partner, not his adversary. That's the best piece of advice I ever got, and it came from La Leche League. Be his partner, not his adversary. Help him find and do and explore the things he's interested in doing. Encourage him. Facilitate and assist. See all that is good about your child. Be the kind of person you want your child to be. Nurture your own curiosity and joy. Find gratitude and abundance in your life. Explore. Make connections on your own. Share those with your children when they're interesting. Find and meet other unschoolers and emulate those whose relationships within their family and their understanding of learning seem best. Read a little, try a little, don't do what you don't understand. Wait a while. You probably won't see an, an, an immediate change, but don't pull your plants up by the root to see if they're growing. That's not good for any plants or any children. Be patient. Trust that learning can happen if you give it time and if you give it space. Watch your own children. Are they calm? Are they happy? Are they curious and interested in things? Don't mar their calm or their happiness with arbitrary limits or with shame or with pressure. Be their partner. Abraham Maslow said in his Hierarchy of Needs, learning can't happen when people feel afraid or hungry, so feed your children happily. Share food and smiles and laughter, watch movies together, listen to music, explore the internet, follow information trails, make connections, touch your children sweetly, smell their heads, relax into an appreciation of each child's presence in your life. If you can envision the kind of relationship and the life of learning you want to have, then every time you make a choice, choose the one that takes you nearer to that goal. Learn to make many choices a day and choose the more peaceful, more loving options whenever you can. Choose to make your life more positive and less negative. I can't emphasize that enough. The families that I see fail are negative. They cling to their negativity. They cling to cynicism and pessimism. Throw those out. Choose optimism. Choose joy. Some things are not possible, but don't have ar arbitrary rules. Don't, if you say no, say no for a real and good reason. Consider saying yes more. It's healthy. Create good memories for your children. Look directly at your child without filters or labels. Even a newborn baby is the person she'll be when she's grown up and old. Babies are not future humans, they're whole people. Help them remain whole and to grow up unmarred by sorrow and shame. 
My husband Keith said once when someone asked him what we hoped to accomplish by unschooling, he said we wanted our children to grow up undamaged. If you can learn to choose to live a life of learning and joy with your children, unschooling can work for you. Thank you for listening to Doing Unschooling Right. For links to some free resources from Joyce Federal, Pam Larickia, and other great unschooling thinkers and authors, please go to sandradod.com. Before that, though, go and do something sweet for a child. And then read a little, try a little, wait a while, and watch. <laughs>